Hey, what's up everyone? Adobe Masters here, and today I'm gonna be showing you how to do the, I don't know what you'd call it, I guess you call it the, like, map effect, um, the traveling path map effect. You kinda saw it in Indiana Jones, and a lot of movies do it. And it's something that goes a little like this, where you have a panning map, and then the trail goes from one place to the next to the next, and then it ends at another location. And of course, this is just a basic one I just threw together. You can, you know, spend a couple hours on this and really dress it up so that it looks, you know, really professional, high def, you know, the points will actually come out and say something, stuff like that. But I'm going to teach you the really the mechanics of all of this. So let's go ahead and let's just delete all of this right here. So yeah, let's go. We're going to delete everything. We're going to delete the camera, delete the shape layer, and then we'll leave the background and the regular, um, the map in there. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we basically just turn the map into a 3D object. And that's because we're going to be using a camera to pan later, which requires 3D to actually be able to affect everything nicely. So yeah, just drag in whatever map you want. Um, make sure it's high definition. The reason for that is so that we can zoom into it and it won't start pixelating or you know, blotching and stuff like that. It'll still look professional even if you zoom really far in. So yeah, go ahead and find a really high def one and just get it so that it's inside the frame here so that we can see it. Um, create your composition so that it is whatever you're going to export it in. So mine right now is in 1080p. And then I found one that's, I think, 3000, yeah, by 2262. And then I just fit it down. And since it's sort of a square, there's going to be a little white space on the edges, but that's okay for right now. So once you have it all set up like this, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to go into Layer, New, and then go down to Shape Layer. Shape Layer is basically what's going to really create this effect. It's going to create a shape and then we're going to manipulate it from there. So once you have Shape Layer open, we're just gonna drop this down and we're gonna add in here Trim Paths. So just click on the Add little arrow over here and then Trim Paths. We're gonna use that in a second. But right now what we're gonna use is we're going to go ahead and grab the Pen Tool and this is where you choose your points. So you can, you know, do a little zoom in like this. So, you, you know, you're choosing the exact points you want. So let's say it starts from, uh, you know, right around the Bay Area in San Francisco. Goes here. Um, if you drag it, you can add a little curve, which kind of looks better if, if you're trying to do like a plane thing. So, yeah, curve there. Then we're going to head into Spain. Um, Turkey, curve it, and then we're going to end up in, yeah, let's go to Japan. Let's go into right around Nagasaki. All right, so that's our path here. So now that we've created that, we're going to go and we're going to drop down, down here in Shape Layer, Shape 1, Contents, Path. So what we don't want is a fill. So we're going to go into Fill first, just make that opacity zero. Now we don't have that stupid fill where it's trying to fill in everything between. Next thing we need is a need basically we need a uh, line here so we're gonna create a color that you want let's go let's see what would work here let's go let's go green that sounds good um and then so yeah let's make it a little bit wider so we can actually see it that looks good and then down here there's a button called dashes just go ahead and click that once and what it does is it creates dashes pretty simple pretty awesome um if you want like a long one, then a short one, then a space, and a long one, a short one. You can keep adding dashes, and it'll keep adding stuff in here, like a gap, and then a new dash, and stuff like that, so you can control it. Dash length is going to control how long each one of these is. So I kind of, let's see, I'm just going to make them a little bit longer, and then you can control the offset. So I want it to start with a dash, kind of like a half dash there. Okay, so now we got the dash set up. And then the next step is really, really simple. And so this is what it is zoomed out. Um, we can, you know, we can dress it up a little bit. We can go into layer styles and add a drop shadow, and now we can kind of see it a little bit better. Um, but the next thing that we're going to want to do here is we're going to go into that thing that we added earlier, which is trim paths. So drop down trim paths, and what this basically is is it's going to it created a path from the first point to the last point, and the percentage is how long it goes through the path. So if you see, I back this off, and it undoes the path. Now this is great because now all I had to do is animate this little end right here. So if I start at zero, which drag that point back to zero. So zero is gonna be zero percent, and let's make this a three second long clip. So at three seconds, we do 100%. And then now you see, just like that, we have an animation from start to finish of this dotted line going across the map. Pretty good start. I mean, you could, you could end it here if this is what you wanted, but let's go ahead and add a camera in here to make everything look a little bit better so let's go let's go edit layer new and then we're going to go in here to camera 
these settings are fine. Um, the default settings are going to be fine for what we're trying to do. So just click OK through that. And now we have this camera. So the first thing before we manipulate anything, we need to also make this shape layer 3D. Now we can start manipulating the camera. Um, make sure it's usually it should be the exact same spot, which it is. So now we need to drop this and make this go into two views so we can actually see the camera here. And so what's cool about this is that now the view of what we see is on the camera. So if we move it forward, it zooms in. We move it back, it zooms out. Move it left to right, it's going to focus on this point, which is kind of cool. You can see that, like, you know, it create, makes it a 3D object. So what we want to do, though, is we want to focus this. So we're going to go here and then see that how it goes over the Y. That means we're going to bring it up. So we're going to click and drag up back to here. And then we're going to focus it maybe right here on the United States like this because we know it's going to start in the United States. So this is our start position. And actually, let's back it out just a little bit to zoom it out some. You kind of just got to think like this is a camera in real space filming a piece of paper. Move the camera around like that. I mean, you can go, um, if you want four views, that might help you so that you can drag up and down here, left and right here, and you can kind of just see it from everything. But working with 3D objects, I only need two views for basically this project. Um, so we're going to go back. We're going to lower it down just a tad bit. Luckily, Japan's on basically the same longitude longitude. So all we're going to have to move is where the camera focuses, which is really simple. So we're going to go into camera, transform, and then here are all of the camera stuff right here. So what we want is that point right there. That's what we're going to manipulate. That's called point of interest. So we're going to go ahead and click the stopwatch on that so that we can create some keyframes for it. If you need to adjust the Y, so maybe you need it to go down over time, you can click that Y too and then just sort of move it. You can just click all of these and then move the camera to where you want it to end and see if it works. What we're going to do now is go into the three second mark right here and then we're going to move this point right there to Japan and just like that the effect is created. So you can see now the camera is panning along with this and because we made both of them the exact same time, it's going to be panning along at the exact same rate. And it's going to basically stay where it should. You can, like I said, dress it up and spend some hours. Maybe have the camera slightly go down every time it goes down and come up every time it comes up. But for this, I really like this. I think it looks really, really neat like this. Um, and if you had a cleaner map, I think this would look really nice. A really, really cool effect here. The last thing we're going to do um, before you export is you're going to just go ahead and we're going to add a little bit of motion blur to this. So you can go ahead and click this button and then it'll turn on the motion blur, make it turn on everything. And then if we go here, let me just have it render out a couple paths here so it isn't, you know, trying to play it at half the resolution. Um, you can just see it adds a little bit of a blur to it here as it moves across. And when you render that out, that's going to look a lot better, I think, than just having it plain across. That is actually, in this, in most things, it isn't a style choice. But this, it is actually a style choice. Maybe you don't like the blur. Maybe you want it to be really, really clean and not have a blur as it moves. That's perfectly fine. Um, but it is a moving camera, so adding a blur is perfectly fine as well. And yep, that's, that's basically it. That is how you create that effect. Um, you can dress it up to any other effects later on, but that's really the mechanics of how to get this to work. Thanks everyone for watching. Um, if you want to see more Adobe related content like this, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you've got any questions or comments, go ahead and throw those in the comments below. And until next time guys, see ya.